In this video, I'm going to reveal a free game-changing technique that lets you create warp fusion quality videos inside of Stable Diffusion. After following this tutorial, you'll discover that it's actually quite simple once you know how to do it. I want to show off some really cool art just so that you can see the kind of quality that people are getting out of this already. This creator, Unreal Unit, used to create videos with Warp Fusion, but recently he has been only creating videos with this new technique. So let's look at a snippet of one of his dancing videos. I think that looks really good. This one is in the anime style, and I am very impressed with the consistency. It just looks amazing. And the last one we're going to look at is something which is very trending at the moment. Dance videos in Lego style. That looks really amazing. Look at that. Awesome. The next creator we're going to look at is Stable Swirls. He creates different style videos, but they look absolutely amazing. Like this animation of a guy in a room, he sort of morphs into a zombie and a robot and all kind of stuff. It's just amazing. And the last creator we're going to look at is Really Big Name. This creator creates many different styles. And we are going to look at the transformation from somebody we all know. And didn't expect that he could do all this kind of stuff. Look at him going. That is amazing. And here's another one to show off what you can do with this technique. And the amazing thing is that without these three creators, I wouldn't have been able to make this video. They all deserve credits in their own way. And you will find out more about this as the video unfolds. So the first creator to give credit to is Andre from Unreal Unit. He reached out to me and showed me how to use a technique in the forum to achieve these amazing results. And although he's not the creator who came up with this technique, I can't thank this creator enough for his exceptional support. And if you would want a video on order, then you could write him a message here directly on Instagram. Before we start the tutorial, let's Let's have a look at the clips that I want to transform. The first one is a dance video, which is commonly created with Warp Fusion. This is a video from Manoletjet, and I want to transform this into a superhero dancing. In the second video, I'll transform the same dancing video into a Lego style, just like the video created by Andre. The third clip features a cute cat from Pexels.com, and I want to turn it into a steampunk style video. And later in this video, I have a great tip for using the AI from DaVinci Resolve to frame the subject properly in the center of your 9x60 video if your base video is 16x9. So let's begin by installing the forum. If you haven't installed Stable Diffusion and ControlNet yet, there is a link in the description to a very helpful installation video by Sebastian Kamp. So now we go to the extensions tab, then go to available, click on load from and type the forum and if you haven't installed it yet it comes up here and you can click on the install button mine is already installed and this is the one you are looking for install this one now there is something very important that you need to do you have to uncheck all of the big extensions because these extensions could create problems when you use control net in the forum you can leave the built-in ones as they are now click apply and restart ui i learned this from stable swirls he created this video where andre from unreal unit gained his base knowledge from on his channel there's another video explaining how to fix control net and the forum conflict issues so now you know why this creator deserves many credits and although he's also not the creator of the technique, I highly recommend checking out his channel, as I'm sure he will create many more amazing videos in the future. One last thing to do before we really start is go into the settings tab, then go to user interfaces, scroll down, click on the triangle here and select initial noise multiplier. Now we're going to apply the settings and reload the UI and close stable diffusion. This initial noise multiplier parameter increases the amount of noise resulting in more detailed images. But in the case of the forum, we don't want a lot of detail to avoid flickering. And by default, it's on 0.5. So we're going to change it so we are able to set this to zero. So in the stable diffusion models folder, we're going to open shared pie with notepad. In notepad, we're going to go to edit, then to find and then type initial noise, then find text. In here, we're going to set minimum to 0, 0.0, then go to file and save it. Now we can move the noise multiplier to 0 to 1.5. Now let's begin with starting the prompt and the settings. And the best thing to do is to start with this in image to image, because it's easier to test your results and then transform this information information into the forum and add additional settings there. And the cool thing is, once you have done that in the forum, then you can save these settings as a text file and use them every time you create a new hybrid video in the forum. Okay, now let's begin with the prompting for the superhero video. Okay, in the image to image tab, I'm going to type in my prompt and the negative prompt and I will drag my image in here. And the best way to export an image in the free version of DaVinci Resolve is to go to file then to export and then covered frame as still and then just export. For the superhero video, I'm using the ref 
animated model. So download this. I am also using the bad hand v4 as a negative embedding and an easy negative. So download these two. Now put the ref animated model in here and the two embeddings in here. Make sure that you use embeddings that are trained on the 1.5 model. All the models I use in this tutorial are all 1.5 model. I will leave all the links that I used in this video down in the description below. So now let's start with the rest of the settings. I will leave Euler A as the sampling method and put the sampling steps to 15. Now I'm going to set the width to 576 and the height to 1024. I would recommend to stick to this resolution if you want to make 9x16 videos. I've tried different resolutions and well it just doesn't work that well. I will set the CFG scale to 3 and the denoising strength to 1. Then make sure the noise multiplier is on 0. So now we're gonna come to the game changing technique that I mentioned in the beginning of the video, which is using the tile control net model in the control net section of the forum. This technique was discovered by really big name. He's the developer of the hybrid video compositing section in the forum and shared it in the forum discord crew. He deserves many credits for this. So check out his YouTube channel for more beautiful videos. To get comparable prompting results, we're going to apply this method also in the image to image tab. And later we will transfer this information into the forum tab. So now we're going to go back to the image to image tab again. So we're going to scroll down to the control net tab. So we're going to enable this, enable pixel perfect, then go to tile and now make sure in the preprocessor set it to none and then this is the right one. I'm going to set my control weight to 1.75 and control net is more important. Now I'm going to add a second control net, enable it, not pixel perfect because this will slow your computer down. Then I'm going to go to open pose and select open pose here. I'm going to leave the control way to 1 and set the control mode to control net is more important. Now let's hit the generate button. Okay, this is quite a nice result. And the reason why my character is not completely changing into a superhero is because of the tile control net model. This ensures consistency later in the process in the forum. To get a more intense, stronger results, we need to use LoRa's. And I will show you how to do that in the transformation of the same video into a Lego style video. So I will leave my superhero as he is and I will save all the settings to apply them in the forum later. Okay, now let's start the Lego figure. I am very excited about this. For this video, I used the Protogene V2.2 model and I'm going to use the Lego LoRa as a LoRa. So I'll download this and place the LoRa in this folder. Now I put the Lego prompt in here and the negative prompt in here. Change the model to Protogene 422 anim and I'm going to leave Euler A as a sampling method, sampling steps to 15. The only thing I'm going to change is something in the control net unit. Here I change the control weight to 1.5 and in the open post control net I'm going to leave everything as it is as well and hit the generate button. Okay this doesn't look so bad and when I ran this through the forum it wasn't consistent at all. So that's why I asked Andre from Unreal Unit if he could help me. So he shared his settings file for his Lego video with me. So before I'm going to apply these adjustments, I'm going to show you how my settings look if you run them through the forum. Well, it looks sort of okay, but it is not consistent at all. And this is something that will change if we change the prompt and settings. I'm showing you this to help you understand that the key to success lies in the prompting and the control net settings. So here is the new prompt now. And in the LoRa Lego, I set it to 0.3. And a nice little tip is if you click in here and hold control and then go up and down, you can scale it, which is pretty and nice. And this is the new negative prompt. Now we're going to change the steps to 13. And in the control net tile model, we're going to set the control weight to 1.2. And in the open post control net, we're going to set this to 0.8. And my prompt is more important for the control model and hit that generate button again wow this looks so much better and especially if you run this through the forum then the video will become more consistent stay tuned because i will reveal it soon but first let's make this awesome steampunk cat so let's drag this cat image in here and for that i use the mechanical cat laura for the model i used ref animated and this is the prompt that i'm going to use and this is the negative prompt that I'm going to use. And if you're new to LoRa's, then put your cursor here, add a comma and a space, then go to this button, go to LoRa's, and I'm also using the LoRa LoRa, and we're gonna add it just by clicking on it. Click out of here again, and now you see it's there. And now I'm gonna change it to 0.4. Now I'm going to change the steps 
to 15 and leave the CFG scale and the denoising strengths as they are. In the control net tile unit, I'm going to set the control weight to 1.5 and control net is more important. And the second control net I'm going to change to soft edge. The preprocessor goes to soft edge head. The model here stays the same and I'm going to put the control weight back to 1. And the control mode to control net is more important. And hit the generate button again. Okay, that looks pretty cool to me. Now we are going to transfer the Steampunk CAD settings into the form. And this deform tab looks a bit overwhelming in the beginning, but we are going to run through it in the most logical way. Starting from the left with the run tab and then moving upwards to the right. After you've done these steps once, then you can save the settings and load them the next time. And then it won't take much time to set this up at all. And that is truly amazing. In the run tab, I leave the sampler to Euler A and I'm going to put the steps to 15. Then I change the width to 576 and the height to 1024. I'm going to leave the seed at minus one and give my file a name. Now the forum will create a folder. In your outputs folder in the image to images folder. In the keyframes tab, we set animation mode to 3D. We don't need to set the video input here because that is something what we will be doing later in the hybrid video tab. Now I'm going to leave the cadence to 2. Cadence refers to the number of frames generated at once. If you set cadence to 2, it will generate 2 frames, but only the first one will be diffused. The second one will be interpolated. For videos with a lot of movement, you set this to 1. And for videos with a bit of less motion, you set this to 2. And I set border mode to wrap. Now we are going to move to these tabs, which are part of the keyframes tab. The keyframes tab can be a bit overwhelming, and I was a bit confused in the beginning too. To make it easier to understand, remember that these tabs below are separate tabs, and they don't belong to these tabs. Now in the strength tab, set the strength schedule to zero. In the CFG tab, set CFG schedule to 3, but this is also something which you could play around with to see what different CFG scales do for you. In the seed tab, set seed behavior to fixed because we want to have consistency in our video. And we can leave sub seed, step, sampler, and checkpoint alone. We don't have to change anything in here. Now we go down to the motion tab and set translation Z to 0. Then go to the noise tab and set the noise schedule to 0. You could also try 0.02, but I would leave it at 0. Then in the coherence tab, set coherence mode to none. If you want to have your own color reproduction from the prompt. If you want the color reproduction of the original video, then set this to video output. In the anti-blur, set amount schedule to 0.05. You can leave depth warping and FOV as it is. Now we go up again to the main tabs and select the prompts tab. Now we are going to move our prompts and settings from the image to image tab into here. Make sure that the double quotes stay behind the colon sign and also at the back. Now paste it in and these are the quotes that I mean. You have to leave them in because otherwise it won't work. Now I paste my negative prompts in here. Now we are going to load our original video and we do this in the init tab. But before in the image init unit, set the strength to zero. Now go to the video init, select your video and copy path. Then paste that in here. Now make sure that these colons, uh, sorry colons, no uh, double quotes, go away. And then enable override extracted frames. Now we are going to go to the control net tab. And now we're going to move all the control net info from the image to image tab into here. So we're enabling it and also enable pixel perfect. Then in the preprocessor, leave this to none and in the model, set this to control tile. And the weight schedule is the same as the control weight. So we're going to set this to 1.5 and set control mode to control net is more important. Now we have to set the video path in here. So to do that, I go to the inner tab and I copy this, then go to the control net and in here, control net input video image pass, you paste it in. Then I will enable the second control net model, enable it, and I'm going to paste the path into here as well. Then I'm going to select pixel perfect. Now in the preprocessor, you won't find soft edge head, but you have to select head. And then here in the model, you select soft edge. My control weight was one, so I leave the weight schedule to one. Then for the control model is control net is more important. Now we're going to move to the hybrid video settings tab. In the hybrid video tab, you set hybrid settings to before motion. Make sure you select generate input frames. For hybrid motion, select 
optical flow and set flow method to this medium. Then open the hybrid schedules by clicking on this triangle and set the comp alpha schedule to 1. Now we go to the output tab and here I set the frames per second to the frames per second from my original video. Now you can click the save settings buttons and hit generate. So the next time you want to create another video you can load these settings files and the form is prepared. To load these settings select your file, copy path and then paste it in here and then click load all settings. And then the next time if you want to create a new video you just go to the image to image tab. Uh, you do all your prompts and your settings and the control network and you just copy them over into the deforum tab. So before we're going to look at the video, I want to let you know that I optimized the video. I upscaled it, I applied frame interpolation and I add the dirt removal and the deflicker node in Resolve. I will demonstrate how to perform these steps and after that we will look at the two other videos that I've created. Okay, let's look at the video. Wow, I really like the video. Look at the consistency in the head of the cat and the background. It's just amazing. I am really impressed about the video possibilities with the forum and I really want to thank all the three creators for uh, making this possible. So to upscale the video I used Topaz Lab and I uh, applied the frame interpolation here as well so that saves me quite some time. But for the people that don't have Topaz Lab or the studio version from DaVinci Resolve I show you a free tool called Flow Frames that can also do interpolation. You can download it here at this link and consider giving a small donation for the great work done on the program. In Flow Frames drag your video in here then you have to either change it or it does it for you. Make sure this is on X2 and then hit interpolate. So now we want to frame our 1024 video into a 1280 timeline. And the best way to do this in Resolve is go to file, go to new timeline and then uncheck use project settings. Then go to the format tab and change it into the one you need. This one. Make sure your timeline frame rate is correct and then in the mismatch resolution choose scale entire image to fit. Now if I drag files in here with different resolutions then it will automatically scale the image to fit. Now change the speed to 200 to get the video back to its normal speed. Now I want to share a tip I mentioned earlier in this video about using the AI from Resolve to frame and track a subject perfectly in the center of your 9x16 video. So if you are in a 16x9 project, make a new timeline, uncheck use project settings, go to format, choose use vertical resolution and then take the one you need. This one I need. And then in the mismatched resolution set scale full frame with crop and then create. Now if you drag your 16x9 video in here it scales it automatically to the subject. Subject. So now you drag it from in here or from in here and ta-da! Now select the clip and go to the smart reframe and click reframe. Now it will analyze and do its AI work. And here is the result. Not bad huh? Now we're gonna go back to the cat clip. Now right click on your clip, select new fusion clip, go to the fusion tab, hit shift spacebar, type in dirt and click enter. Then hit shift spacebar again and type in the flicker and enter that as well. You can leave automatic dirt removal to default and the deflicker node you're going to set to fluoro light. And don't worry if you don't have the studio version from Resolve because I don't always use these options. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I think the frame interpolation does already a really good job and the other things are just a bit like you know tiny bit extras. And as it worked fine for the cat video it totally didn't work for the Lego video. If I hit Control P I can put the node on and off and if you put it on you can see that it's just like I don't know not so good. So I deleted that and also for the deflicker node I had to adjust some settings. So I changed this to advanced controls then I set frames either side to 1, motion range to large, threshold to 42.5 and the motion threshold to 43.3. Now my background flickers less but I've got tiny artifacts on the lego person. It's just you gotta choose. Now you can select the node hit ctrl c and ctrl v two times to have 40 flicker nodes. Now export the video and you're done. We're almost ready to watch the two other videos but before that I want to mention that I'm very excited to see how this technique can work on photorealistic videos. You know, can it compare with uh, Tokyo Jeb's temporal consistency method? Okay, let's start with the superhero video. I am pretty satisfied with the consistency of the background. The subject uh, is not completely consistent, especially his head, but I think that comes because he's wearing a hat. I think if it would have only have his hair, then I think it would be better. So now let's have a look how the same video looks in Lego style. Wow, this video looks so much better and consistent than the first attempt that I did. 
I really love it. So I want to thank Andre from Unreal Unit one more time for his impressive help. And if you're interested in Tokyo Jab's temporal consistency method, then you can click here to watch that tutorial. And meanwhile, I'm going to work on this. And if I've got something ready, then I will put that here.